The Cetacean Nation Broadcasting Network, April 2013. Update report for the Cetacean Nation. So here we are with the crossroads now looking back at our own mistakes, our own misapprehensions of an entire civilization, if you will, but of course civilization is a, not the correct contextual word for describing the, the cetacean nation. We can only describe it from our limited word symbols. Uh, it is as vast and as fluid as the ocean itself in terms of a way of being, a way of understanding, a way of connecting uh, as a planetary consciousness and an open invitation to humans to join in this already well-established continuity of consciousness that the cetaceans have enjoyed for millions and millions of years. By us, some estimates, the cetacean populations have evolved to their current state, if you will, current physical properties for between 12 and 25 million years. So they've already found the perfect vessel and vehicle for an evolved being on a water planet, and yet still retaining their mammalian, and this is important, I mean they're not fish consciousness, they are mammal consciousness, which relates them back directly to us. We are also the same phyla. And they have something to share, something that they understand in the way of being that has evolved over so many, so long a time. And they ask us and invite us into that world, which is a sacred world. And they're almost doing it out of a, a timeliness because we are an upstart mammalian race that also has a burgeoning consciousness that is getting us into trouble, almost like an infant who is out of control, not knowing what to do with their new powers of recognition and testing their wills. So we are still an infant giving birth to a new infancy of liquid consciousness at this time. And in doing so, we must be delicate, caring, and nurturing of this new sensibility for it to exist as one thing melds into another, as the solid thinking, reductionist, rationalist framework, belief system is starting to melt like a cube of sugar melts in a solution. It is starting to distill itself into the solution of our being and our once very cubical sensibility. The Aristotelian square of opposition as a way of uh, defining our reality. The use of numerical and alphanumerical symbols to describe and transmit that uh, notion of reality from one to another. Uh, this is transcending now. We're seeing it like a 3D paradigm as part of a larger context that is only one of many things, one of, uh, of a selection of senses, if you will, one of the sixth sense of realizing who and what we are, along with the other five, no more important, no less important, but one of many rather than the most exclusive and only way of contemplating ourselves in this physical existence. So the dolphins and the whales, the cetaceans, are here reminding us that there is more to uh, this reality than the physical evidence that we've so far un uncovered. They demonstrate how one can let's say, have a greater perception, a more finite mapping of the physical reality through our senses. Their sense of uh, sound 
not only through hearing directly, but also interpreting sound wave vibrations on the subtlest levels through their, many in some cases through their teeth, the conical shapes of their teeth operating in a way of transmitting the sense of sound that they're putting out and listening to. And this is all done with the frontal mind, frontal brain, frontal uh, lobe, if you will, that is so far advanced and developed in the cetaceans, particularly the ones that we've been able to uh, study. It's this realm that has fascinated scientists in the last uh, century and going all the way back to the earliest reckonings of Aristotle himself looking at what looked to be dolphins in a situation where they were interacting with people, whether it was a dolphinarium, some evidence indicated that there were areas where dolphins and humans could interact uh, and it was set up so that they could swim in and freely interact with hu certain humans. Now this could have been uh, some sacred ceremonial thing, uh, we don't really know. But bottom line is that we have records uh, of an esoteric nature that indicate that we had a much deeper connection and understanding of the cetacean consciousness. And now we're back with that potential capability again and more people reaching out to connect with that and it's done now at this critical time, this critical juncture in the development of our human consciousness as to whether we are able to transcend the limitations that we ourselves put on ourselves in order to have some semblance of control, some semblance of security for the way things are. And this, of course, has been shown to be a giant illusion spoken about in the ancient texts, the Vedic texts, the Hindu and Buddhic philosophies of how we create the illusion through thinking and overthinking. And thinking itself has become the taskmaster and we are enslaved by the tools of thought, which are the symbols, words, numbers, notes, that construct this illusion of solidity that we all have somehow taken for granted or have been programmed to take for granted as the only way of getting around in this consciousness.